We're going to take a look at how Photoshop and Export Kit deal with background layers. Now what we did for this example was we created a new document and we actually chose a transparent background for the background contents. There are two choices you have between transparent and background color. White is actually just a white background color so they're both treated the same. So for this example uh, we're going to deal with transparent. Now if we were to export this directly as is, uh, and let's just go ahead and take a look. you'll see that nothing will happen. Now the problem is that what we did was we opened up a new file and we made changes but we didn't actually save that file. So we can just go ahead and save it. You'll see again nothing will happen. This is common with Export Kit. What you're going to have to do is if you create a brand new document you will have to close that document and reopen it. Now once the document is reopened we can begin our export. You'll see again nothing happens. Again this is a common uh, mistake. What there is, is there is no layer data present because what we have is an empty layer. Layer 1 by itself will not export anything. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to add content either to the layer, so for instance text layer, or respectively add another layer and then add content there. Now if we save this and we run it, you'll see that it exports. So this is one of the first errors that if you notice that nothing is happening uh, with your actual document. So if we take a look at the output itself now. Actually, let's just take a look at the skins really quick. You'll see that what was created was basically a full transparent um, PNG, the size of our actual document, and you'll note the extra bandwidth. So if we just open this up, you'll see it's transparent. And if we take a look at the actual code, you'll note that the image is included along with our text layer. Now you might not want this image in your actual output so the fastest way to do this is to simply remove the empty layer. Export Kit does not like empty layers whatsoever so this would also be apparent if you were to create an additional text layer but not have any content and let's say we save this and try to export it you would see that nothing happens. This is because in our text layer we don't actually have text so you need to add uh, some type of content. Let's just go ahead and actually modify that. Oh, I guess there's no sizing on it. And there we go. And uh, let's just actually change it to text. So now that we have content, we can save this. And you'll see it'll export correctly. Now, you'll note that what we did was we actually changed the size and positioning of this text. What this is now is this is treated as paragraph text. Uh, that was the mistake I made when I actually clicked it. What I did was I dragged it rather than uh, just simply clicking it. Now, paragraph text is different from a uh, label text, basically. Label text, this will be treated where it will actually render all of the pixels that are used to actually create the text. So you'll note this if we were to use guides. Um, let's actually just come off of the... So if we use guides to actually show the uh, where the pixels are located, you'll see what it does is it covers the actual visible area of the text element. And uh, let's just actually slide over so we can see where the Y is. You'll see it down to the end of the Y. Now this is different from paragraph text. Uh, paragraph text, what it will do is it'll actually measure the area of the text element. So you'll see here, actually let's just clear the other guides you'll see that our, our paragraph area spans this entire region. So this is how we basically treat different text elements. Now another thing to note is our naming conventions. Now we did, uh, we added simple text. If you add a text element, what Photoshop is likely to do is give the layer name uh, basically the contents of your text element. So if I had a really long layer name, Photoshop will actually assign that as the layer name. But in your output, uh, you might not want this, and here's the reason why. If we were to export this as is, so let's just save our test, and we take a look at the actual output code. you'll see that our layer names are reflective of the actual layer name that we gave it, so we might not want this in the output. 
you will have to consider the naming convention of your layers in your PSD as they are reflective in your output. So rather than my really long layer name, this might be, you know, your title. Or actually, let's be more descriptive and call it a header title. And let's assume, uh, let's just change this. Let's assume this is a description here. Change the size a bit. Okay, so that's our text description. So what we're going to need to do now, and let's just actually reorganize this slightly. This is our text description. In our output, if we were to actually export this again, you'll note that now this will be reflective of our actual Photoshop layer names. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the code. So you'll see now we have text description and header title. This will make it easier to find layers in the output if you need to make additional changes after the export. Now, the next thing we want to take a quick note is that what you need to do is organize your layers and your folders. Export Kit supports folders, so you need to have as many folders as possible. The more layers you have, the better, as it will keep your actual code extremely organized. So for instance, uh, here, what we might have is, let's say this is a content. So what we can do is simply group this, and let's call this uh, content. And in our content now, we have a header title, and we can just call this uh, title. Now, because we called it a header, possibly that this is the actual header information. So let's give this a group again. And this is our actual description. So we can just call this description. Now these contents are relative to our content folder. So our header and our title, well, our title will actually be respective of our actual header folder. And this is contained within our content as well as our description. Now to get an organized output, for instance, if we were to export this as is, let's take a look at it really quick you'll see that we still only get our individual layers, but we do want to maintain our actual folder structure. So what we can do is if we hit customize and we enable relative positions and then we export. Now if we take a look at the code, you'll see that our code is now structured based on our actual Photoshop element. So you'll see that we have our content div, which is respective of our content folder. We have our header div, which is respective of our header folder, along with our title and our description. Now, if we go back to Photoshop, we did say we were gonna deal with uh, two types of backgrounds. So what we can do is we can basically just close this document and let's create a new one. And we're actually gonna use a background color. Actually, let's set a random background color. Let's make this red. So let's use the background color. Now you'll note the size of the document in the actual uh, in our actual Photoshop PSD. What this will do is this will translate to the respective size of your output document. So right now we have a width of about 1200 and a height of a little more than 1800. So our actual output size will be respective of this. So let's go ahead, let's save this as test. We're just overriding the original file. And let's just export this uh, just to see exactly how this looks in the output. So you'll see nothing happens. This is because background on its own does not really have any layer content. You have to add layer content. So let's go ahead and let's add a layer. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and save that and let's re-export you'll see nothing happened again. This is originally because of our previous error where we created a new file and we made a lot of changes to that new file. What you're going to have to do is save your document, close it, and reopen it. Now you can run the export. Now if we go to our actual output, you'll see that what we have is we have our text layer. Our background layer was not processed, so it's irrelevant the color that you use. The only thing that's important is the size of the actual document itself. 